Hi, and welcome to Teach Me JDE by Grant Thornton Advisors. Today, we will be looking at approval routes in JD Edwards. Hi, my name is Anthony Palmasano, and I'm an experienced manager at Grant Thornton. I specialize in automation, process improvement, and implementation. I'm joined today by one of our associates here at Grant Thornton, Lily Anderson. Lily, please introduce yourself. My name is Lily Anderson, and I'm an associate at Grant Thornton. I'll be helping to walk through the PO approval route set up today. Great. Thanks, Lily. Uh, let's jump right in. The purpose of PO approval routes is for when businesses require approvals of purchase orders by the appropriate people when the order exceeds a user-defined monetary amount. These approval routes help to maintain control over the processing of these orders. The approvals are set up and executed at the order level with the order total determining if the approval is required. Next, we'll look at step number one. The first step to setting up these PO approval routes is setting up approvers in the system. In the Work With Addresses program, the originator of the PO and all persons on the approval routing need to be set up. Next, in the Work With User Profiles program, attach the address book number to the user profile so the system can send approval emails to the user. Moving on, we'll look at creating the actual approval routes. The right. second step in the setup is to create the approval routes. In the Approval Level Revisions program, each approval route must have a unique route code and description. Here you also assign the responsible people and the amount that the order must exceed for their approval to be required. It is possible to assign more than one approver to the same level, and responsible persons should be assigned an ascending order based on the from amount. Some additional recommendations are that there should not be the same approver at different amount levels in one approval route, and there should not be more than one approver at the same level amount because the first approver listed at that amount will receive all email notifications while the second person will be left out of the process. Another note, if the originator of the order is on the approval route, and if there is another higher approver on the route than the originator, the order is sent to that approver, bypassing lower approvers, regardless of the PO amount. If there's no one higher on the route than the originator, the order will be automatically approved. Next, we'll be looking at attaching the approval route to the PO entry. Next, we'll need to attach the approval route to the PO entry via processing options on the Work With Order Headers program. On tab 10 of the processing options, you can attach the approval route code itself or choose one of the options shown for number one on this tab. Next, we'll look at setting up the order activity rules. Shown here in this table are the default order status codes, which can be changed but must be set in the processing options to match the order activity rules. To prevent an order that is in approval process from being received or printed, set the processing options for PO receipt and PO print so they will not accept orders at awaiting approval status. Next, we'll look more into the order activity rules. The order activity rules must be set up for every line and document type combination used for order entry. The processing options behind the order entry, approval review, orders awaiting approval, and review approval notification programs must be set to agree with the order activity rules. Next, we'll look at how orders get triggered for reapproval. If an order is rejected, modified, and then sent back through the approval process, it will appear on the approval review screen with a caret next to the line. In the orders awaiting approval screen, it will also show as amended in the notes section. These rejected orders will need detailed changes in the critical fields to re-enter the approval process. You can set which are the critical fields that will act as these triggers. Finally, we'll look into some more functionality of approval routes. There is additional functionality for approval delegation. If an approver is out of office, for example, you can transfer approval authority from one person to another. That process includes querying for approver, selecting the approval route code to delegate to, and entering the address number of the person you want the approval authority delegated to. Now that we've finished the setup, we'll move into a quick demo. To start our demo, we'll go back to step one, which is setting up approvers in the system. In the Work With Addresses program, you want to make sure that you have the PO originator and approvers set up. So we'll look at adding a person here. I'll give them a, a name and search type. And we have our one of our people here. 
Our next step was to move in and attach the address book number to a user profile. So we'll search for. Oops. So our next step is to attach the address book number to the user profile. So we'll create a user ID. And add our address number. And next we can move on to creating our approval route here. So we are going to do a PO order type. And you can give it a code name. I'm going to do POA1 for now. And give it a description. PO approve. And we can put a budget approver in here. So we can use our person that we just created in the system. And then we're going to add our from amounts and our people to approve here. So I'm choosing 10,000 and we can add anybody who you need to put here. And I'm going to add another line to show and entering another person for approver. So at the 10,000 level, this person, Roger Bacon, needs to approve, and above 50,000, Sam Smith needs to approve. Click OK. And our next step was attaching the approval route to the PO entry. So I'm going to find the processing options in my version here, which is going to be right here. And under tab 10 for approvals, it's going to be number one here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the route code in here, but you could also put any of these options one, two, three, four. I'm going to click OK. And now we've added our approval route to the PO entry. So our next step is going to be the order activity rules. There are already PO order type activity rules in here. So when you go to add, we're going to click up here. And this is where you would enter, enter all of your statuses for whatever route you need to follow. Um, for the sake of not having to watch me type all of this out, I'll show you some order activity rules that are already set up. So here, I'll click in. And this is what it should look like. And then again, you have to make sure that the processing options behind the order entry, approval review, orders awaiting approval, and review approval notification match your order activity rules. So that has our approval route set up. And we talked about having to have critical fields to trigger a reapproval. So in this program here, you can see there are some ones in some of these fields. These are going to be our critical fields, but you could easily change if you don't want extended costs to be critical field. You can take that out if you want anything else to be in here. Supplier number, critical field, and change that. Press OK. And lastly, we talked about approval delegation. And we'll go to the work with approval delegation here and we can search for our person that we created, John Smith here, and we can click into here and we'll be able to delegate that to uh, one of our other people that we had on the, on the approval route. And that brings our demo to an end. Thank you, Lily, for that demo. So in summary, we've taken a look at how to set up the approvers and originators in the address book, how to create an approval route with its own uh, unique code and description, reviewing the order activity rules to make sure they're in line with the approval process, also looking at what triggers reapproval by looking at the critical fields. And finally, uh, we took a look at the additional functionality to delegate approval of the orders when someone might be out of the office. How can our Grant Thornton team help you? 
We offer multiple services to assist with your JD Edwards install or implementation. Anything from a multiple day orchestrator training session to optimizations and enhancements of your current install and full blown JD Edwards implementations. Feel free to reach out via that email below and I thank you for your time today.